So why don't you tell us in your own words what's driving the growth at Coke right now and the better outlook? Yeah, we had a, we had a great quarter, actually. I think that the, the big story is that this is another quarter of growth uh, on, an, on you know, a, an improving trend of momentum. We're now getting multiple years uh, of good growth rates. Uh, really, the numbers are probably more like a, a five, but multi-year growth. And I think it's a sign that the transformation of our business to being more consumer-centric, more innovation and, and marketing-led, and being faster and more nimble with our bottling partners on executing is really bringing together increased momentum across the global business system. I think it's very heartening for everyone that works uh, in the Coke system. I mean, we see it in the share price reaction up 5%, as Carl mentioned. The numbers were a lot better than expected, and the stock has underperformed. The market this year, Pepsi this year, what, what did the street have wrong? Um, I, I think in a way we, at the beginning of the year, we came out with some guidance. You were just talking about the macro environment. Uh, we saw some clouds on the horizon too, uh, but the storm never arrived. So by sticking to our plan, by executing against our strategy, uh, we've been able to deliver stronger momentum than even we were expecting. And that's why it's allowed us uh, to raise our guidance for the full year, expecting a 5% organic revenue growth in the full year. Um, clouds are still there, but the, the storm doesn't arrive, and so we're going to stick to our strategy, focus on executing, and really drive for a better underlying uh, operational result for the year. And talk about what you saw in different markets in terms of the balance between pricing and actual unit growth or volume growth, and what that says about underlying demand. Well, I think what's really, really encouraging uh, for, for everyone is the fact we're getting a good mix of volume and price. I mean, this quarter was a 3% unit uh, uh, volume growth. Uh, the average of the last four quarters has been two. Average of the last four quarters of pricing has been three. So really, we're getting into the sweet spot of uh, balance of, of volume and, and price, which is really symbolic of the fact there's a tremendous opportunity ahead in the beverage industry. Ultimately, commercial beverages have a tremendous growth runway, particularly in the emerging markets, uh, where 80% of the world's population lives and only a quarter of what they drink is a commercial beverage of any sort. Um, so there's a massive runway ahead of us. And I think our ability to find a sweet spot of volume growth with price, driven by the marketing, uh, the innovation, and the execution, really sets us up for sustained long-term momentum. What about in North America specifically, where pricing is obviously a bigger growth driver than, than volume growth? Is that just we're going to get used to smaller packages and that's going to be the norm? or? Can you do anything to lift those volumes? Um, well, we're really focused in the U.S. on, 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 on driving our business through transactions. Um, and so we have been bringing down some of the package sizes. That's part of our overall effort to grow our business uh, and to reduce our calorie uh, footprint. So it, really in the U.S., we're looking uh, to see the balance of the revenue growth driven by a little bit more price and package mix and brand mix uh, than volume. Of course, we'd love to see... Uh, a little bit of positive uh, volume, but we think that sticking to our strategy is going to help us re-engage uh, very constructively with consumers well into the future. And so we're seeing um, household penetration of our brands growing, uh, interaction with the brands growing, and importantly, we're seeing growth both in the sparkling beverages and uh, in some of our premium stills beverages. So setting ourselves up uh, for many good quarters to come. Okay, let, let's go through the portfolio. Coke Zero Sugar, got to start there. Another quarter, double-digit growth. Is this a new diet? Are, 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 are these Diet Coke drinkers transferring over to Coke Zero Sugar? Is it attracting a new crowd? What is it about this product? It's really three things. It's some Diet Coke consumers coming over, but generally that's not the biggest source uh, because people are super loyal to Diet Coke. Uh, some of the people are going from Coke uh, as they want to, uh, uh, as they want to balance things out, they maybe have a Coke, a Coke Classic, and a Coke Zero Sugar. So coming from Coke, and then coming in from other categories, um, coming in from spar sparkling water categories, coming in from uh, other other sparkling categories. So the, really, the the sources of growth for Coke Zero are broad based, which also gives us a lot of confidence uh, that we have a lot of runway ahead for this brand. I did see in the release there was a shout out to the new Coke, the big Stranger Things promo that you guys did, the new Coca-Cola, orange, vanilla. How do you turn up the notch on innovation where you can get products out there 
that younger consumers are interested in? Well, I think it's, it's that trying to find the sweet spot of uh, engaging with them on something that's relevant, whether it's a new flavor like the orange vanilla, which had a, a, a kind of a whimsical marketing campaign behind it between the two guys who kept appearing at basketball games, or, or, or it's uh, in the smaller cans, or it's with a, a different marketing approach like the integration of new Coke uh, into the latest season uh, of Stranger Things, which is, of course, a super hot program um, uh, for teens and, and young adults. So really finding ways to gain reconsideration. Uh, and sometimes you come in uh, on the moment of reconsideration and you stick with the franchise in one of the different variants, but it's about that constant need to re-engage uh, with consumers because there's so much choice out there, so much competition. Yeah. Uh, it's about sticking with them and staying relevant. What about Coke Energy? I saw that you shared that it's doing well. It's available in, in more markets. You won that arbitration against Monster. Some people are, investors are wondering what that's going to mean for your stake in Monster and whether you need to be there still if you're developing your own product competitor. Uh, I mean, obviously, we, we got the arbitration. We launched Coke Energy. We, we absolutely think there's room for both. Uh, we've got a great partnership with Monster. It's created a lot of value. They have a, they've done, created a great business and a great brand, and, and we've helped them take it to the next level. And Monster's still growing. We see a lot of future for that. And we see Coke Energy playing in a different space, uh, being a sort of uh, a more inclusive brand, a, a, softer, a softer flavor compared to some of the other energy brands. And the early data, and it's still early days, shows that it's uh, attracting consumers from outside the energy category, also from cons non-monster consumers of energy predominantly. Uh, so we really do think this is a complementary approach for the Coke system, and it'll work for our partners too. Just wanted to go global with you a little bit. Asia has been a big story and a growth driver for you. I mean, how do you balance what you're seeing in consumer spending across Asia, particularly China, with the weaker economic numbers that we're getting out of the region. Yeah, I mean, there, there have been some headlines, headline softening, but still growth in the region. Um, what we've seen uh, is, is continued consumer demand across a broad range uh, of consumables, in, including beverages. I think some of the higher ticket item uh, categories uh, or durables have, have been a little softer in China. But in consumables, we've seen, it, seen continued strength. And, and ultimately, for the long term, a growth trajectory of the, of the Coke system, we see China, the ASEAN countries, the Indian subcontinent, and Africa as four real large opportunities to extend out our growth into the future. Yeah, your native UK got a new prime minister today, a Brexiteer. What's your expectation right now as someone who does a lot of business in this country about whether there will be a Brexit deal before October 31st or a crash out of Europe? Um, I wish I knew the answer to that question. Firstly, congratulations, Von Boris, on becoming Prime Minister. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that we will get some sort of negotiated deal um, um, ultimately to bring uh, this all to some sort of conclusion. Uh, I have my own personal points of view, uh, but I think most importantly we need resolution of the uncertainty in the least disruptive way possible. Yes, you've, you've said that before. Um, currency was no joke. Again, nine-point currency headwind for, for the earnings per share. Do you welcome a rate cut from the Fed chair ne at next week's meeting? Uh, I mean, I think the, whether he comes up with a rate cut or not, what we've definitely seen uh, is some more stability in the foreign exchange markets. There was a big strengthening of the dollar coming out of the summer last year. But since then, since the third quarter last year, from our perspective, the dollar has been relatively stable. It got a little bit stronger uh, over the last 12 months, but it's basically been stable. So, uh, you know, from our point of view, seeing that stability continue into the future, I mean, whether the, F the Fed comes down a little bit, I mean, you're going to have to balance that against whether the ECB starts doing more buying or not. Uh, ultimately, it would certainly suit us to see uh, the stability we have now continue into the future. And finally, a hard turn from Fed easing to alcohol and CBD. The Wall Street wants to know where you are on both. We're going to get an alcohol product in Japan. How bullish are you that that could go beyond Japan? And CBD, what's your latest thinking in terms of experimentation? Well, in Japan, the, 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 the alcohol drink we have there is based a very Japanese uh, logic. 
We face uh, full range competitors from soft drinks to spirits to beers to all sorts of other things, uh, selling at the same customers, often the same consumers for the same occasions. So the, the drink there is very uh, specific to Japan uh, and not projectable globally. And then CBD, there's absolutely zero change in my position uh, that there's nothing happening.